In phonetics, the airstream mechanism is the method by which airflow is created in the vocal tract. Along with phonation and articulation, it is one of three main components of speech production. The airstream mechanism is mandatory for sound production and constitutes the first part of this process, which is called initiation. The organ generating the airstream is called the initiator and there are three initiators used in spoken human languages. The diaphragm together with the ribs and lungs, pulmonic mechanisms. The glottis, glottalic mechanisms, and the tongue, lingual or balearic mechanisms, though not used in any language, the cheeks may be used to generate the airstream, buccal mechanism, notated, in box. See buccal speech. After a laryngectomy, the esophagus may be used as the initiator, notated, O, for simple esophageal speech and, U, for tracheoesophageal speech in box. See esophageal speech. Percussive consonants are produced without any airstream mechanism. Types of airstream mechanism Any of the three initiators minus diaphragm, glottis or tongue minus may act by either increasing or decreasing the pressure generating the airstream. These changes in pressure often correspond to outward and inward airflow, and are therefore termed aggressive and ingressive respectively. Of these six resulting airstream mechanisms, four are found lexically around the world. Pulmonic aggressive, where the air is pushed out of the lungs by the ribs and diaphragm. All human languages employ such sounds, such as vowels, and nearly three out of four use them exclusively. Glottalic aggressive, where the air column is compressed as the glottis moves upward. Such consonants are called ejectives. Ejective and ejective-like consonants occur in 16% of the languages. Glottalic ingressive, where the air column is rarefied as the glottis moves downward. Such consonants are called implosives. Implosive and implosive-like consonants occur in 13% of the world's languages. Despite the name, the airstream may not actually flow inward, while the glottis moves downward, pulmonic air passes outward through it, but the reduction in pressure makes an audible difference to the sound. Lingual ingressive, aka valeric ingressive, where the air in the mouth is rarefied by a downward movement of the tongue. These are the click consonants. Clicks are regular sounds in ordinary words in fewer than 2% of the world's languages, all in Africa. These mechanisms may be combined into airstream contours, such as clicks which release into ejectives. The Khoisan languages have pulmonic, ejective, and click consonants, the Chadic languages have pulmonic, implosive, and ejective consonants, and the Nguni languages utilize all four, pulmonic, click, implosive, and ejective, in normal vocabulary. Most other languages utilize only one or two airstream mechanisms. In interjections, the other two mechanisms may be employed. For example, in countries as diverse as Sweden, Turkey, and Togo, a pulmonic ingressive gasped or inhaled vowel is used for back channeling or to express agreement and in france a lingual aggressive a spurt is used to express dismissal the only language where such sounds are known to be contrastive in normal vocabulary is the extinct ritual language daman also the only language outside africa with clicks however daman appears to have been intentionally designed to differ from normal speech pulmonic initiation Initiation by means of the lungs, actually the diaphragm and ribs, is called pulmonic initiation. The vast majority of sounds used in human languages are pulmonic aggressives. In most languages, including all the languages of Europe, excluding the Caucasus, all phonemes are pulmonic aggressives. The only attested use of a phonemic pulmonic ingressive is a lateral fricative in Daman, a ritual language formerly used by speakers of Lardal in Australia. This can be written with the extended version of the International Phonetic Alphabet as, Co has ingression as a phonetic detail in one series of its clicks, which are ingressive voiceless nasals with delayed aspiration. Peter Latifoged considers these to be among the most difficult sounds in the world. Other languages, for example in Taiwan, have been claimed to have pulmonic ingressives, but these claims have either proven to be spurious or to be occasional phonetic detail. In interjections, but not in normal words, pulmonic ingressive vowels or words occur on all continents. 
This is commonly done for back-channeling, as with, in you, or affirmation, as with, in Swedish. In English, an audible intake of breath, H, or an indrawn consonant such as, T, or, P, T, T, is used in a conversation to indicate that someone is about to speak or is preparing to continue speaking. In some languages, such as Finnish and Amharic, entire phrases may be uttered with an ingressive airstream, see ingressive sound. Glottalic initiation it is possible to initiate airflow in the upper vocal tract by means of the vocal cords or glottis. This is known as glottalic initiation. For aggressive glottalic initiation, one lowers the glottis, as if to sing a low note, closes it as for a glottal stop, and then raises it, building up pressure in the oral cavity and upper trachea. Glottalic aggressives are called ejectives. The glottis must be fully closed to form glottalic aggressives, or the air column would flow backwards over it, it is therefore impossible to pronounce voiced ejectives. Ejective allophones of voiceless stops occur in many varieties of English at the ends of intonation units. For ingressive glottalic initiation, the sequence of actions performed in glottalic pressure initiation is reversed. One raises the glottis, as if to sing a high note, closes it, and then lowers it to create suction in the upper trachea and oral cavity. Glottalic ingressives are called implosives, although they may involve zero airflow rather than actual inflow. Because the air column would flow forwards over the descending glottis, it is not necessary to fully close it, and implosives may be voiced, indeed, voiceless implosives are exceedingly rare. It is usual for implosives to be voiced. Instead of keeping the glottis tightly closed, it is tensed but left slightly open to allow a thin stream of air through. Unlike pulmonic voiced sounds, in which a stream of air passes through a usually fixed glottis, in voiced implosives a mobile glottis passes over a nearly motionless air column to cause vibration of the vocal cords. Phonations that are more open than modal voice, such as breathy voice, are not conducive to glottalic sounds because in these the glottis is held relatively open, allowing air to readily flow through and preventing a significant pressure difference from building up behind the articulator. Because the oral cavity is so much smaller than the lungs, vowels and approximants cannot be pronounced with glottalic initiation. So-called glottalized vowels and other sonorants use the more common pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. There is no clear divide between pulmonic and glottalic sounds. Some languages may have consonants which are intermediate. For example, glottalized consonants in London English, such as the T in rat, at, may be weakly ejective. Similarly, fully voiced stops in languages such as Thai, Zulu, and Maidu are weakly implosive. This ambiguity does not occur with the next airstream mechanism, lingual, which is clearly distinct from pulmonic sounds. Lingual valeric initiation The third form of initiation in human language is lingual or valeric initiation, where a sound is produced by a closure at two places of articulation, and the airstream is formed by movement of the body of the tongue. Lingual stops are more commonly known as clicks, and are almost universally ingressive. The word lingual is derived from Latin lingua, which means tongue. To produce a lingual ingressive airstream, first close the vocal tract at two places, at the back of the tongue, as in a velar or uvular stop, and simultaneously with the front of the tongue or the lips, as in a coronal or bilabial stop. These holds may be voiceless, voiced, or nasalized. Then lower the body of the tongue to rarefy the air above it. The closure at the front of the tongue is opened first, as the click. Release. Then the closure at the back is released for the pulmonic or glottalic click accompaniment or efflux this may be aspirated affricated or even ejective even when not ejective it is not uncommon for the glottis to be closed as well for a triply articulated consonant and this third closure is released last to produce a glottalized click clicks are found in very few languages notably the Khoisan languages of southern africa and some nearby tongues such as zulu they are more often found in extra linguistic contexts such as the Tisk tisk. Sound many Westerners use to express regret or pity, a dental click, or the clucking noise used by many equestrians to urge on their horses, a lateral click. Lingual aggressive initiation is performed by reversing the sequence of a lingual ingressive, the front and back of the tongue, or lips and back of the tongue, seal off the vocal cavity, and the cheeks and middle of the tongue move inward and upward to increase oral pressure. 
The only attested use of a lingual aggressive is a bilabial nasal aggressive click in Daman. Transcribing this also requires the use of the extended IPA. Since the air pocket used to initiate lingual consonants is so small, it is not thought to be possible to produce lingual fricatives, vowels, or other sounds which require continuous airflow. Clicks may be voiced, but they are more easily nasalized. This may be because the vocal cavity behind the rearmost closure, behind which the air passing through the glottis for voicing must be contained, is so small that clicks cannot be voiced for long. Allowing the airstream to pass through the nose enables a longer production. Nasal clicks involve a combination of lingual and pulmonic mechanisms. The velum is lowered so as to direct pulmonic airflow through the nasal cavity during the lingual initiation. This nasal airflow may itself be aggressive or ingressive, independently of the lingual initiation of the click. Nasal clicks may be voiced, but are very commonly unvoiced and even aspirated, which is rare for purely pulmonic nasals. Airstream contours In some treatments, complex clicks are posited to have airstream contours, in which the airstream changes between the front click and rear non-click release. There are two attested types, linguo-pulmonic consonants, where the rear release is a uvular obstruent such as q, or chi, and linguo-glottalic consonants, where the rear release is an adjective such as q, or q chi. Theoretically, a release into an implosive should be possible, but both clicks and dorsal implosives, are rare, the latter because they are difficult to pronounce, and no language is known to combine them. Percussive consonants Consonants may be pronounced without any airstream mechanism. These are percussive consonants, where the sound is generated by one organ striking another. Percussive consonants are not phonemic in any known language, though the extensions to the IPA for disordered speech provide symbols for a bilabial percussive smacking lips, and a bidental percussive gnashing teeth. The only percussive known to be used in non-disordered speech is a sublingual percussive a tongue slap that appears allophonically in the release of alveolar clicks in the Sandaw language of Tanzania. See also Manner of articulation Index of phonetics articles References External links Eating the Wind, a satirical, but illustrative example of sound symbolism and iconicity of airstream mechanisms. 1. Robert Eklund, 2008. Pulmonic Ingressive Phonation, Diachronic and Synchronic Characteristics, Distribution and Function in Animal and Human Sound Production and in Human Speech. Journal of the International Phonetic Association, Vol. 38, No. 3, pp. 235-324. 2. Robert Eklund's website devoted to ingressive speech. Maps, sound files, and spectrograms. 3. Samples of ingressive pulmonic interjections from northern Sweden.